Welcome back trainers. Today we're going to be talking about egg breeding and this is a pretty comprehensive guide so if you need to make sure you use the chapters to skip to where you need to be. In generation 9 there are going to be three different abilities that Pokemon can have that will half the amount of time it takes for you to hatch an egg. Those abilities are going to be Flame Body, Steam Engine, and Magma Armor. Now there's only a few Pokemon in the game that actually have these abilities uh, available. That's going to be Camerup, the Fletchinger line, Larvista and Volcarona, and the Roly Coley line. So let's go ahead and talk about these for a moment. The first on our list is going to be Camerupt. Now Camerupt can be found in the northeastern Paldea, so it's kind of at that right side, upper right side of the map over there. Um, and you can find it there, but honestly I think it's just going to be so much easier for you to come down and catch a new mole. Uh, you can see here I fast traveled over to the Poke Center in West Province Area 1 and it is literally right here at the Poke Center waiting for me. So I would say catch a Numel and evolve it so that you can get that magma armor faster and begin your egg hunting. And just so you guys know, Numel does evolve at level 33. If you are near the beginning of the game or a new player, then you're probably going to want this Pokemon, the Talonflame line, or specifically Fletchling. You can catch this at the very beginning area, um, and they're all over the place too. You can catch them all over, and Talonflame itself you can catch in the final area, Area 0. Uh, but the Fletchlings are all over the place. It's not a hidden ability uh, Pokemon, so you can get Flame Body relatively easily with these, and they don't have a crazy catch rate either. You can just throw balls and you'll get one. So this is a good uh, kind of budget option for either people that are at the very start of the game or new players. The next Pokemon on the list is going to be Larvista, and Larvista can literally be found anywhere in the Asado Desert. It's a, a huge area of the map, and it's a nice area because it's wide open, so you can just kind of run uh, real hard if you've unlocked the uh, the dash on your Pokemon. You can run real hard real fast and just find them. Uh, so this is a good option for you. You can evolve it into Volcarona, or you can catch a Volcarona later in the game in an area like Area Zero, for example. All right, now Roly Coley, uh, the whole Roly Coley line or the Colossal line, actually has two different Flame Body type abilities that work. One is Flame Body, and the other is Steam Engine. Steam Engine can be found on Roly Coley and Carcoal. That is basically their ability slot one. And the other ability for Roly Coley is Heat Proof. Heat Proof will, when you evolve it to Carcoal, become a Flame Body. So that's how you would have the Flame Body version, but Steam Engine works the exact same. So if you get Steam Engine on your Roly Coley, you're good. If you got Heat Proof, evolve it, and then you're also good with Flame Body. So either way, you're very good, and you can catch these in East Province Area 3. Okay, the last Pokemon to talk about here is going to be Charcadet, and Charcadet is one of my favorite Pokemon from this gen. I mean, it is awesome. I love the evolutions and everything. So cool, and it does get Flame Body. Another cool thing about this is it spawns in 70% of the map. It's literally everywhere. The problem is it's not the highest spawn rate. It's not a common spawn rate. It's not super, super rare either, though. So you can find them. You just got to be a little vigilant if this is the Pokemon you want. Uh, you can also get them in raids super early on in the game. And you can get their evolutions later on as well in five-star raids or, or six-star raids also. But um, then you can breed them down and get the baby and so on and so forth. This is one of my hatching Pokemons and uh, I, I couldn't be happier about it. Just a final clarification, uh, from what I can find online, it's a 1% spawn rate, and that would put it in the rare category, so it might be a little harder for you to find if uh, I kept finding them. But if you're not finding them, then maybe that's why. So you might want to start looking for raids or trade or whatever you got to do if this is the one that you want to be your hatching Pokemon. All right, so that is the list of Pokemon that have abilities that are able to cut in half the amount of steps that it takes for you to hatch your egg Pokemon. So again, these are Flame Body, Steam Engine, and Magma Armor. Good luck getting those Pokemon. All right, the Destiny Knot is an essential item for breeding. It is one of the most important ones, uh, specifically if you're going for IVs. If you're just doing shiny hunting, you don't care about IVs, don't worry about it. But if you want good IVs, you've got to get a Destiny Knot. You can buy this from any of the Deli Bird Presents uh, stores that are inside of Mesa Goza, and it's $20,000, so it's not going to break your bank. Now what the Destiny Knot does is actually super important. So basically you equip this to a Pokemon. It doesn't matter which of the parents you equip it to. It could be the one with the great IVs. It could be the other one. It doesn't matter because what it's going to do is going to take the six stats from the female, the six stats from the male, and they're going to go into a pool. 
so 12 stats total. The Destiny Knot is going to make sure that five of those stats from the parents are going to pass down to the offspring Pokemon. The other will be ran the other will come from randomized stats, but it's going to make sure that you're getting some of those stats passed down and inherited into that baby Pokemon so that it'll make your breeding a little bit easier. So as you get as you breed better and better Pokemon, you're going to eventually upgrade the Destiny Knot to those and breed better and better Pokemon. You will see it towards the end of the video when we're actually doing the breeding and got the IVs going, you're going to see how much that works and how much it really affects you. And as you get better and better, it's going to take you less and less time to get the one that you want. All right, so the Everstone, there's uh, two different ways you're going to use the Everstone. The first is if you have a Pokemon that has a great nature for whatever you're breeding and you want to make sure the offspring has that nature, equip the Everstone to it and the nature will pass down. The other is if you are trying to breed a regional Pokemon, for example, Galarian Meowth, which you'll see at the end of the video, in order to actually breed it down into a Galarian Meowth and not a regular Meowth, a Cantonian Meowth, you're going to have to equip the Everstone, and that will lock the species in, that regional variant, so that all the offspring will be that regional variant that you're going for. The Everstones are available at the Delibrew Presence as well, and these are going to be for $3,000. And I do believe you can get these at all the Deli Bird presents, but I know for a fact they're at the ones in Mesagoza. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about egg moves. In this generation, Gen 9 Scarlet Violet, it's actually super, super easy to learn egg moves. Uh, you don't even really need to breed anymore. So what you're going to do, go into your Pokemon summary of whatever Pokemon is going to learn the move and forget one of your four moves. Make sure this Pokemon only has three moves available to use uh, when you're going to do this. Otherwise, you can't learn it. The next thing you're going to want to do is to buy a mirror herb. And you can get this from Cascarafa. So go ahead over there and buy one from the Delibird presence that's there. And it's not super expensive or anything, so you'll be fine. Just make sure you go and get one and then equip this to the Pokemon that is going to learn the moves. All right, next, put whatever Pokemon has the move that you want to teach the other one. Make sure you put that Pokemon in your party. So whichever Pokemon is learning the move is in your party, and whichever Pokemon has the move you want the other to learn is in your party. After this, you're going to back out, and you're going to start a Picnic. Picnic comes out. All the Pokemon get thrown out. Boom. And then you're going to immediately just pack the Picnic up. And that's it. Your Pokemon actually now has the move. You can see the Masquerada has Sucker Punch. And that's it. It's super easy in this gen. You don't need to do anything else. That is literally it. All right, we're going to talk about some numbers that can be quite annoying now because we're going to be talking about abilities. So we're going to break it down here a little bit. So if you have a female Pokemon with a hidden ability or HA and you have a male of the same species with a hidden ability, you have a 60% chance of passing that hidden ability down. Now, if you have a female with a hidden ability and a male that does not have a hidden ability, it's going to be a 60% chance for that hidden ability to pass down. So same as the original. Now, if you have a female with no hidden ability and a male with the hidden ability, you have a 0% chance of getting a hidden ability. If the male has it, the female doesn't, it doesn't matter, you're at zero. Now, if it's a female with no hidden ability and a male with no hidden ability, you have an 80% chance for the female's ability to pass down. So again, this would not be a hidden ability. Somebody has to have a hidden ability for it to be a hidden ability Pokemon. But you do have an 80% chance for whatever the female's ability is to be passed down. Okay, now with different species or dittos, a female with a hidden ability plus another species in the A group or a ditto is going to have a 60% chance of being a hidden ability. In this case, though, if you have a male with a hidden ability and a ditto, not another species, but a ditto, you have a 60% chance of that becoming a hidden ability. Now, if you have a male with hidden ability or regular, plus another species with a hidden ability, you have a 0% chance of that male's ability passing down. Because again, the female will always dictate the species of the Pokemon except when using a genderless ditto. All right, a question that is new to this generation specifically is can Terra typing be passed down in breeding? So if you have a 
Charizard that's water type, can you pass that down? And the answer, unfortunately, at this time, is no. No, you cannot. There might be an item that's going to come out in the DLC that allows you to hold it so that you can pass that down like the uh, some of the other items work, but at this time, there is not a way that we know of to pass it down. So let's talk about Pokeballs. If you're like me and you're a little bougie, then you're going to want to pass down whatever Pokeball you caught your Pokemon in because, well, let's face it, we sat there for minutes on end trying to get the right Pokeball. So how do you do that? Well, generally, it's going to be the female. The female is going to give you the, uh, the Pokeball, whatever they're in, that's what it's going to come down to. However, if you have a male and a female of the same species, then you have an equal 50-50 chance of it being the, the moms or the dads. It could be either one. You have the, uh, the option for both there. But if it's a, a female Pokemon and a Ditto, then it's just going to be the female. That being said, if it's a male with the Ditto, it's going to have the Ditto's Pokeball. Okay, let's go on and talk about the Masuda method now. The Masuda method is basically when you are breeding a Pokemon, let's say you want to breed a Sprigigato and you want to either get the shiny for it or you're going for IVs, you want to use the Masuda method. And that's whatever your other Pokemon that you're breeding with it is, is from a different language. So if you're breeding your Pokemon that's an English Pokemon and you have a French Ditto or a French male version of what you're breeding, it will not only make the eggs hatch a little faster, but it will give you a much increased chance at a shiny. So if you're just breeding for competitive, the small bonus is that your eggs are gonna come around a little faster, but the main focus for the Masuda method is the increase in shiny luck. That is the main increase there, and I'm gonna show you those numbers here in a moment. Uh, if you need a Masuda Ditto, go to the link trade that I have on the screen there. It's uh, 44484448. I believe this was put together by Austin John, and this is how I got mine. So this is a great thing to do. People are still doing it as of the time of this video. Uh, they're going to these rooms and trading for those Dittos. So go do that, and uh, shout out to Austin John for the help. Thank you. One little thing, just be careful in the room. Make sure you're checking the Dittos that you're getting. First of all, I'd be a little leery on any six IV dittos. You don't know where it comes from, and if it's hacked, you don't want that on your Switch. Uh, but otherwise, you want to make sure that you're getting an actual different language. So make sure you're checking it, looking at it, and then trading it away. Also making sure the other person's actually sending a ditto and not something else, not a Fletchling or something. All right, so here are your shiny chances if you're looking for shinies. Full odds is going to be 1 out of 4096, so that's 4096, and that's a lot of Pokemon. Uh, if you add the Masuda in, just the Masuda, that brings it down to 1 in 683, and if you have the Shiny Charm, then that's going to lower it even further to 1 in 512. Now, that being said, the sparkling buff that you get from sandwiches does not count for egg breeding. It's only for wild encounters and things like that. So it's not going to help your egg breeding at all, but the Masuda Ditto, the Foreign Dittos, or Foreign Pokemon will, and the Shiny Charm will. Moving into IVs, or individual values, each Pokemon has a total of six stats that you can normally see. If you go to your inventory or go to the Pokemon summary for any Pokemon, you can see their health points, their attack, physical damage, special attack, or non-physical damage, defense, the ability to negate physical damage, special defense, the ability to negate special attack damage, and your speed, which determines how fast and who goes first in the battle. All right, each of those six stats is going to have a numerical value between 0 and 31, and that's going to determine how good or bad that stat is going to be for you. The maximum 31 is going to be best. That's literally what it's called. You can see it on your, your summary screen once you have that judge feature. Then it goes down from fantastic at 30, very good, 26 to 29, pretty good, 16 to 25, decent, 1 to 15. Now, generally, you're going to be wanting to take everything to best 31 and get the max values out of your, your stats that you can. But there are going to be specific builds, for example, a Trick Room team where when Trick Room goes off, the speeds on the team are basically reversed. It's like a weird dimension where slow goes first and fast goes last. And so on those teams, you would want to have the worst speed you can possibly have so that you can actually go first. So that's a good example of when no good is actually good. Now, in order to see if you have best or no good or fantastic stats, whatever it may be, you're going to need to unlock the judge function. 
In order to unlock the judge function, you simply need to uh, progress through the entire main story of Victory Road, Starfall Street, and Path of Legends. After you've completed those main story progressions, you simply go to any Poke Center, talk to the lady there, and she will talk to you about the judge feature, and now you have it unlocked. Now to use your judge feature, all you gotta do is go into your boxes, so hit your X on your Joy-Con, go to boxes, go in, hover over any Pokemon you wanna see, and hit the plus button until the judge feature actually pops up where you can see your best stats and pretty good stats and so on and so forth. So you can see here my Mimikyu with the best stats in four categories, HP, Attack, Defense, Speed. I hyper trained the special defense stat because it was too low and I do not need the special attack stat so I just let it lie. Alright, so once you've looked at your stats and you see that most of your stats are not perfect, if it's something especially you just caught in the wild, then what you're going to need to do, assuming you don't want to try to breed for better, is hyper train these stats. So you're going to need to head to Montanavera, and the Poke Center right there is going to have a guy right next to it with an Obama Snow, and he's the hyper train guy. You'll just need to go talk to him. If you have bottle caps, you'll be able to hyper train these stats. So each stat that is going to be hyper trained is going to cost you one bottle cap per stat. Now, if you have a golden bottle cap, you're able to train all of them for the cost of one golden bottle cap. After you've hyper trained, you have the ability now to go in with your judge feature, look at your Pokemon and see their hyper trained stat. And you can be happy with your new awesome Pokemon. Now, something that's very important to know is that hyper trained stats will not pass down in breeding. Basically what happens while breeding, the parent Pokemon's original stats go into a pool, and from that pool it'll generate randomly the six stats that the egg Pokemon is going to get. And Hyper Training isn't an original stat, it's a, an upgraded stat, and so that doesn't count. Now let's talk about EVs or effort values. This is literally the effort that you put into training your Pokemon. Every time you defeat or capture a Pokemon, you're going to receive 1 to 3 base EVs into a specific stat that that defeated Pokemon awards. Now you can get EVs from both wild battles and trainers that you fight in the game. Raid dens, however, are not going to award you any EVs. Basically, if you're getting experience from it, you can get EVs from it. To check the EVs on any given Pokemon, you simply hit X on your Joy-Con and then go into Pokemon Summary on any Pokemon hit uh, right on the d-pad and then hit l and you will be able to see your pop-up with where your ev uh, it's like a grid it's a graph and you'll be able to see where your evs are kind of leaning which stats have evs in it which don't and, and which you want to raise as i said earlier you can actually purchase the supplements as well from any chancy supply they're in their uh, hp up protein iron calcium zinc and carbos and each one of those will increase your evs i'll go into more detail about this in the uh, the guide i'm going to be putting out soon that guide will be specific for EV training. It'll go over how to hunt Pokemon for EVs, which items to put on it, how to maximize your free EV training, or it'll also go into how to buy supplements, how to put the EVs into those Pokemon properly, etc., etc. So there should be a lot of information on that to make EV training easier for everyone. All right, so a new feature added in Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet is going to be the Picnic. Okay, now the Picnic is the new mechanic that is going to be used for breeding. Instead of daycare centers, those are gone. They are not in the game. Maybe we'll have them in a DLC or something. I don't know. But for right now, all we have is the Picnic. And you can do a lot of stuff in the Picnic. You can actually play with your Pokemon or you can give them a shower. And that stuff is going to increase the friendship and they're going to have some interaction with each other and so on. Uh, but really what we're going to be looking at right now is the sandwiches making them and what does that do? So in Gen 9, all you got to do to breed really is have the Pokemon that you want to breed in your party. And then at the Picnic, they're going to come out of their Pokeballs and they'll start doing their thing. Uh, but there are things that you can do to actually increase their uh, breeding productivity by getting these sandwiches made that have egg power. Now there's three different levels of egg power, one through three, and each one has a better bonus than the first version does. So egg power is basically going to make it so you have to wait less time to receive your eggs from those Pokemon. So you'll get eggs much faster instead of having to wait longer. And each level increases the, or I should say decreases the amount of time per egg. It's just giving you a higher chance of getting those eggs early. So level one is better than not having it at all. Level two is better than level one. And level three is going to be a stronger buff than level two. Egg power will also reduce the amount of total steps you need in order to hatch your eggs. So pair this with a flame body Pokemon and hatching your eggs will be no problem whatsoever. 
All right, so to get in your picnic, first, make sure you're not on your mount. Second, make sure you're in an area that has a flat area. It will not allow you to do the picnic if you're on a slope. Uh, otherwise, go hit your X button and go to the picnic option. Click picnic, and you're going to flop out the table and throw up the Pokeballs, and now everybody's going to be out. Once you're in the picnic, go talk to the table and select make a sandwich. Now this is going to take you into the sandwich screen here and you have a list of sandwiches you can choose from. You will unlock more as you progress through the game. However, all you really need to do is go to create a sandwich. So hit X and that's going to bring you into the kind of you can make your own thing. And that's going to give us the sandwich recipe we're going to do right now. All right, so for egg power level one, it's a very simple recipe. It's one banana and one jam. And that is literally it. So put your recipe together, customize, watch the little cutscene. Now, one clarification, the pick that you use for the sandwich, at least from what I can tell and gather, it does not do a thing. I like to uh, use the, the heroic sword one because I feel like it's good luck when I'm doing shiny hunting, but otherwise it really doesn't make a difference. If you want to do it just for, you know, lols or whatever, that's up to you. Uh, but you could use just whatever the cheapest pick is. Okay, our sandwich is done, and you can see we have egg power level 1, item drop power electric level 1, and raid power bug level 1. You're always going to get three buffs. What we're specifically looking for here is egg power. There's shiny buffs and dropping buffs and all kinds of things you can do, and there's recipes for that. But these are just the easiest, quickest recipes for you to get your egg power 1 through 3. Okay, so for our egg power level 2, we're going to be simply using one banana, one peanut butter, one butter, and one jam. Make sure you get both the peanut butter and the butter, and this will grant you your egg power level 2. So this is going to be the sandwich you're probably going to be using for the most of your breeding, really. I, the level 3 is great, except it costs Herba Mysticas, and those are rare. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, so this is the one you're probably going to be using more often than not. It's kind of like your budget awesome exception to the best. All right, let's talk about Herba Mystica for a minute. Now, this is a, an extremely rare item that you're only going to get from 5 plus star raids, so 5, 6, and probably 7. Um, these are very rare, Not they don't always drop, they're single digit percentage kind of thing. And there's a ton of recipes that you can use these for to shiny hunt. And that's how I've been using them, is to shiny hunt Paradox Pokemon with certain recipes. Shout out to Austin John for those. But, uh, but that's what I've been doing. And you can use these for your level 3 egg power. However, for the bonus that you get to the level 2, it's just not worth using the item all the time when they could be used for something else, a different recipe. So keep that in mind. I recommend using these more for shiny hunting, but if you want to get a ton of eggs really, really quickly, then go ahead, drop it in, and uh, do this recipe to get your eggs faster. All that being said, let's look at the recipe. It's going to be pretty easy. One piece of lettuce, one sweet herb mystica, and one salty herb mystica, and that'll give you your egg power level three as well as sparkling grass power and tidal power for grass as well and those will also be level three now one last thing there are also vendors throughout the cities that have that sell food and those food give the same three types of buffs that you'll get from just making sandwiches also so you can actually just go and buy a sandwich while you're in town if you want to do that instead of having to try to hunt down the ingredients or you just don't feel like manually doing it you could just buy them and you'll find egg power one and two i haven't seen an egg power three vendor maybe there is one uh but uh, for the most part you can get both one and two at a vendor somewhere i find it just a little easier just to sit down and make it real quick all right now before you run into breed there's a couple things you want to do the first thing you want to make sure you do is go into your boxes and make sure you go to a box it is empty. In this case, you can see I reserved these two boxes for Meowths. Okay, that's the first thing you want to do. The next thing you want to do is go down to Options, and you're going to optimize your game for shiny hunting and, well, egg, egg breeding in general. So you're going to turn your text speed to fast, and you're going to come down here and turn your autosave off. Hey, FutureCon here. I forgot one thing to talk about, so I'm going to go ahead and make that edit right now. One other thing you're going to want to do in optimization, I'm sorry I forgot to mention it earlier, is turn give nicknames off. That way every time something hatches, you are able to uh, just go to the next thing, go about your business. You don't have to wait for that next screen to come up and you're constantly just spending a little bit more time per egg. It's just going to be a little bit faster overall for you. Okay, that's what you're going to do. Uh, yes, save the settings and then once you back out, do a hard save wherever it is you're going to do your picnic. 
All right, there we go. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into your picnic and you're going to wait and get your eggs. That's what you're going to do. You're going to go wait, get your eggs uh, so you can do your process. But do not save after you receive all the 10 eggs. If you want to keep going, waiting for more, that's fine. After you get all the eggs you want to do, you're going to exit and you're going to start hatching everything. Just hatch it all, hatch it all, hatch it all. Okay. Now something you can do, let me see boxes here. Uh, just assume that these are eggs, right? You can select everything in your party. Bingo, bango. You can put it in an empty spot like this. And then you can come over and again, select everything in a line. Bada bing, bada boom. And bring it over. It's a little easier than having to mess one egg at a time. Move one egg over, one egg over, etc, etc. So that's a little bit faster for you. Okay, so after you've hatched everything, if you don't have an egg that was shiny and you're specifically shiny hunting, all you got to do is turn your game off. Do not save. Just turn it off. That hard save you did earlier was a nice little pivot point for you. And now you can reload and you don't have to worry about mass releasing 9 million eggs. You are good. Now that's again assuming you saved before you went into the picnic and got all your eggs. If you saved afterwards, all of those eggs are already pre-generated as to what they're going to be. So if they weren't shiny, if they weren't 6 IVs, they're not going to be. So make sure you did it before you got the eggs, before they were made or generated in the game code. That way you can just restart and then go in and get new eggs that are going to just generate a new code and have the possibility of getting the things you want. If you're IV training, it's a little bit different. If you're IV training, you're going to want to go ahead and keep some. You're going to want to remove some. There's going to be a lot of ins and outs for you there. Maybe you're going to have a lot of 5 IV breed jacks that you're not going to use, but you have friends that do. Whatever it is, you probably don't want to sit here and get rid of everything. If you do, if you just want to wipe the seat clean, then do the same thing that shiny hunters are doing and turn the game off completely. Okay, so instead of showing you guys hours and of endless footage about breeding and how we got our upgraded IVs to the 6 IV, I'm just going to break it down in the box here. That being said, assume this is a bad Meowth that it has no best stats whatsoever because the original one that we used, that I used from uh, the Professor, I accidentally got rid of in this process. So just assume that's, that this is that one. That being said, we took that Meowth that had no IVs on it, no good IVs on it, and bred it with the 5 IV ditto that is here. After just one batch of 10 eggs, we ended up getting a 2 IV Meowth, and so that was the one that we were going to swap in in place of this one that was here. So that became the new Pokemon to breed with our ditto. So make sure you change your Everstone or your Destiny Not Whatever Pokemon's holding, whatever. Make sure you put the right items on as you swap Pokemon in. Also on a side note, make sure you don't accidentally release the Pokemon you were using while it has your item. <laughs> Just make sure you have that. But otherwise, make sure you're swapping your items so that you have them on the right things. After that, we took our 2 IV, we mated it with this 5 IV Ditto. And after some eggs in round 2, we ended up getting a 3 IV Galarian Meowth. Now this one, this stage took me a little while before I got the three IVs, but it was still within like 30 eggs. It wasn't that big of a deal. I just had some bad luck. So after that, we switch in our three IV. So now we've got a three IV Meowth mating with our five IV Ditto. Very shortly after that, within 20 eggs, we ended up getting a five IV in our third round Galarian Meowth. So that becomes the new Pokemon that would be normally breeding with this Ditto. However, we'd be really, really waiting on a random stat to go to best on speed. So what I did instead was I took a Ditto that was in my box from France. There we go. Uh, that has a best speed in stat. And I made it that with our brand new 5 IV Galarian Meowth. So that way we've got a best speed stat in the mix, and we've got five IVs covered from the Meowth. Gave the Destiny Nut to the new Ditto, we still got the Everstone on our Galarian Meowth, because it, again, it's a regional Pokemon, and we started the breeding process. And let's take this other Ditto out of here, get it out of the way. Okay, so after we did the mating process here, honestly, I got super lucky, and just in a regular round two, I ended up getting a five IV with the best in the speed stat, to mirror, or complement rather, the best five IVs we have in the other Galarian Meowth. And this was also a male, so it complemented our female one perfectly. You could then take this Ditto with only the two IVs, take it out, 
and we bred these two together. After some breeding, you'll be able to see that we ended up getting our 6 IV Galarian Meow. So we were able to get it relatively quickly. It didn't take us days or anything, um, just uh, about an hour and a half, I think. And we ended up getting a 6 IV Galarian Meowth, and there it is. And that's really what you're going for, at least most of the time, if you're breeding something for a Trick Room team. You know, maybe you want to be breeding something that has no good stat in it. But a lot of the time, if you're breeding for IVs, especially if you're a perfectionist, you're going to want those 6 IVs, get all the best stats, and be good to go. And that is going to be it. I will have an EV training guide coming out shortly. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. But until then, take care.